All right, here we go. What are we talking about? All right, so I wanted to talk about, um, I presume, uh, so uh, most people are pretty okay with the idea of uh, homosexual people. Uh, I assume you're one of them. Um, uh, I yes. think probably we'll be focusing in on trans, non-binary. Uh, so I guess I'll start off with, uh, so trans people exist. Um, I don't I don't think that's a question. Um they exist uh and what we what i define trans as is uh people that are assigned a, assigned a, either male or female at birth and then they uh they transition to being the other gender and uh and then in non-binary for non-binary people they they are assigned male or female at birth um and then they trans they transition to identifying with neither of those so um I guess we can just start there. Uh, okay. What what what's your thoughts? Well, okay. Well, I am curious. When you say assigned at birth, do you just mean uh, when they're born, we recognize that they have the reproductive organs of male or female? Yeah, there's some uh, there's some there's some uh, hiccups there with uh, intersex people, which For is sure. like point one five percent or something. But generally just, speaking, yeah. I just wasn't sure if you were saying that societally. We say this is a boy, this is a girl, or if you're saying at birth, they they get the term of reproductive rights or not I reproductive to, rights, sorry, of, of uh, yeah. reproduction detail. I guess uh, the most unambiguous way is to just uh, XX, XY chromosome. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I uh, so so really it comes down to the idea of uh, definitions like should gender and sex just be synonymous or should we have um gender mean um how one identifies and ha sex um mean uh what you're born as um so so he here's a few complications i have um one of the biggest things is it's so complicated that uh, the people that want this thing don't make it easy so i i've uh like you were talking about uh, a large amount of people that might have trans issues are perfectly fine with gay people and I, I would say beyond perfectly fine with gay people, I mean, I would fight in the streets for gay rights. I'd fight in the streets for anybody's rights. Um, but when it comes to complicated things that um, people might create some ideas and then do I go with it or not? Do I like the word lit for meaning cool? Do I, <laughs> do I, if somebody, if half the trans people say a term like, um, what is it? Uh, M M M T F or F T M male to female, female to male. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're using sex. And so they're not, cause a lot of people would say, okay, your sex is your sex. You can't change it. Um, but you can change your gender, but then there's others that will say, okay, so you're male to female. Are you changing your sex? And I, and that's not only referring to having a sex operation. And so if I were to change definitions, I would want to know that at least the majority are on board. And I feel like the people that want to make these changes, the majority are wanting to make complicated things happen, or at least that's what it seems like to me. Yeah. So uh, we uh, terms have been moving away from sex. So uh, you mentioned having a sex change. It's the, the legal term or the medical term is gender reassignment surgery. Okay. Um, and then uh, colloquially within uh queer spaces that's called top or bottom surgery okay. um uh so that part is going it's so the the main way to look at it for me is that sex and sex is highly bimodal right um highly bimodal because you're it's almost binary there's uh there's also there's uh some conditions where you have xxy there's xxx which i guess is just superwoman um then there's also intersex, but highly bimodal. Uh, um, and gender is also fairly bimodal too. Uh, most people um, either identify as male or female. Um, and then there, but uh, there's more people that identify outside of uh, male or female or, um, and I guess this is more specifically non-binary people, but there's also people that uh, start as female um, and then transition to male and all the way around. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, Sex is biologically determined, but gender is societally, societally constructed. 
Um, and I think the best example of this is like the, the, the very people that advocate for sex being the absolute be all end all like Ben Shapiro, uh, is that your is that your idea of a man? Like the like the he's a man for sure, but is he like the masculine ideal of a man? No, because his expression of gender is not um, like shredded, six two, ripped. You know, mm -hmm. so just apply a microcosm of that, uh, or not a microcosm. Just apply that more generally to um, someone being born male, assigned uh, male at birth, um, but ha having more uh in terms of temperament in terms of how they want to present um temperaments a biological one in terms of how they want to present is the main one that aligns more with female so the idea of trans is that they could uh so the, the first part is societal recognition so uh back in the olden days if you wore a dress um as a man well people just laughed at you um and what the what the trans movement wants to achieve is that it's that's not something to laugh about um laugh at um and um and then there's also legal recognition can you identify as a as a as a as a, as a woman on legal documents uh stuff like that um <clears throat> and then non-binary is also another thing there too so um yeah so i would say sex and gender are fairly linked but that doesn't mean they're totally linked um with regards to your uh, question about definitions yeah for sure um well so there's going to be two separate categories for talking about um i think um just trans like somebody feeling like they're in the wrong body like the opposite body um is very different from non-binary but be um which and so i have i have a more issue with the non-binary thing than i do for the other trans element but just to uh to know where i'm coming from a little bit i don't know if um so so we can't see you right now but can you see me yeah okay can you see this picture uh yeah Okay, so this. Oh, also, can you see the ink that came off my pen on my thumb, and everywhere all over my hand? Oh yeah, um, yeah, I can see that. I was I was wondering what that was. Yeah, I was taking notes, and I need to change this pen out. Anyways, this actress is from this uh, show that the show is actually about a lot of non-binary people, um, and the show's called uh, Sort of. Anyways, uh, this is this person was born male and is female now, and she's gorgeous when i was watching the show thought she was gorgeous and then i learned that it is a trans person in the show trans person in real life um if i saw that person in real life and i saw them steal something from a store and i was giving the report later i would say um oh i saw this woman steal this thing and she uh she grabbed this and she ran over here so um the way i view pronouns is <laughs> what somebody what you perceive i think um the the words only make sense in my mind for perceiving something now i do think that if you're wrong and somebody overhears it that it, it might make sense to say it like one time i worked at a at a place and this guy that i worked with um had long black hair and uh, somebody, somebody that I was chatting with, which was a really nice customer, said something about um, this young lady over here uh, talking about my coworker. And my coworker turned around, oh, I'm a, I'm a man. And so it, so it makes sense to, um, to catch something, to switch over. I don't think the person was offended. Um, but uh, so anyways, I guess what I'm trying to say is as I've analyzed the, the pronoun situation, what makes sense to me is like, I, I don't want people to tell me what to talk about. I, I, I don't care what somebody's sexual orientation is. I don't care what their race is. I don't care any of this stuff. If I say, this is my friend, George, I don't need George to say like, uh, I'm gay and you didn't mention that or, you know, and so what somebody's identity is what they th how they what they want to do in a bedroom or what they how they view their gender or their sex or any of that kind of anything with their favorite movies i happen to love movies so i'll talk about it but if somebody starts talking to me about football 
I'll, I'll just think like, what, who are you to choose to take my time up with football? Um, so, so same thing with uh, anything we each choose what, like what we have any interest in. I don't have any interest in somebody identifying as something in the same sense that somebody might not have the same interest as me in the type of like foreign films I like to watch. Does it, does that make sense? Is that a, a thing, something we can bounce off of? Yeah, so uh, what I want to mention with that is um, a lot of people can go their entire lives with probably not even seeing a, a trans person in real life, or at least someone that is outwardly trans. Um, mm-hmm. I, I I live in Iowa, so literally this is this is the case for pretty much everyone, um, especially in like these rural communities. That's never going to happen. So. Um, it's actually pretty easy to have that that belief in mind where you don't want to talk about it because odds are, uh, if you're living in bumfuck Iowa, you're not you're not going to have to anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, um, the thing the thing that uh, so, and, and I've heard this I've heard this a lot. People are like, "What does transphobia mean?" I'm not afraid of transphobia or not afraid of trans people, right? Mm-hmm. What you're afraid of is what a society looks like if trans people are are seen as accepted um, in the same way that, um, and since since you accept uh, gay people and would even go as far as to uh, fight for their rights, uh, in the same way that gay people are accepted. So that's, um, so when you say uh, that you don't, you don't care, um, that's, a, that's a neutral stance. It's, it might not be outwardly uh, transphobic, but neutrality um, and centrism and for that matter, uh, doesn't produce a society that's accepting of trans people. That's why it's viewed as transphobic. Um, and there's there's other examples of this too. Uh, can I, can I clarify? Yeah. Can, can yeah, I clarify something? Because I, I I just want to make sure that you um, know how I feel. Sure. When I said I don't care, I'm I'm mostly just talking about my personal interests, like in liking art, liking this, that, or the other. Um, so let me think of it in a, let me explain it in a different way. So, so recently people came up with this, this idea that of a non-binary, uh, as far as I know, it's, it's somewhat recent. Let's just say it's the past hundred years, um, okay. but it, it's something I'm not used to um, in society. So I'm not used to me talking a certain way about it. So let's say out of nowhere, pe- everybody, or not everybody, but let's say a chunk of people um, let's say about 10% of people decide they think the best thing to do is when you introduce yourself, you say your sexual orientation. So you say, oh, hi, I, I'm Carson. I'm I'm straight or I'm bisexual or whatever. Um, I would decide as a person, I might decide, oh, I like that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Or I might decide I have no interest in doing that. So what I'm claiming is that I don't think somebody should be offended if I'm a person that says I have no interest in changing my verbiage for someone else. So being accepting and willing to fight for gay people, I'm also accepting and willing to fight for trans people. If I saw somebody trying to hurt a trans person, I would I would fix that situation instantly. Um, I would defend yeah, but- anybody, but I, I don't want to be told how to change how I talk. And aside from being told to not say something like, don't say the N word or around religious people, don't say goddamn or this, a couple things to not say in public. Don't say retard. Um, there's nothing in human history that I know of where people say you need to talk this way or don't leave your house <laughs> until this. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, I just want to comment on you. So you you would defend a trans person being assaulted, but that is does that have anything to do with that being that with that person being trans uh, specifically, or would you just defend anyone being attacked? I would defend I would, I would defend anyone being attacked yeah. or losing their rights or this that or the other. It really doesn't matter. I think we all deserve um, e- equality in the in most senses. Right. So that that's good um, in the sense like it's it's always good that you're willing to defend everyone. The problem is that, you know, if you'd be willing to defend a gay person, but not a trans person, but that doesn't describe your situation. So. Uh, 
so it's uh, so you mentioned mentioning your sexual orientation uh, when you're introducing yourself, and I can see why uh, you would object to that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't personally. I don't, and I don't put my pronouns in. You know, my well, I have to for some of my jobs, but otherwise, if I don't have to, I don't. Um, so the reason why. Uh, so first off, sexual orientation. I don't think that's really necessary information to start with, uh, mm-hmm. unless you're. I don't know, unless you just see everyone as a hookup, as a potential hookup, maybe then you should probably put it in there. But um, the the thing with gender is that it is so it's such a universal part of uh, how we live life, Um, because if you think about it, uh, the way the way you express yourself in modern society, how is that? It's usually through commodity consumption. Right. So you like golfing, you like marvel movies you like uh computers you like video games all these are commodities and the only thing that's not a commodity is your gender even though your gender can can become a commodity through clothes uh stuff like that um so that's the difference between sexual orientation and gender gender is a part of essentially all human interactions uh i don't think that's too much of a stretch to say would you disagree I, I disagree in the sense of, I guess it depends on what you mean by gender. Um, I don't gender in the sense of the the idea of separating it from sex, making it not synonymous with sex. Uh, I would say no, not at all. Having it synonymous with sex, I would say completely. And maybe the easiest way to do it would be to t- take gender, remove it. So we don't have boy, girl, man, woman, or this idea of gender. We set it aside and then we replace it with something called blue blop. So blue blop is how people identify. And let's say they can identify creating any words they want for any spectrum of feminine or masculine. I think that's an, a, a fair enough uh, making it similar, but we're calling this blue blop. People can create their own words. Let's say there's 150 of them. There might be like 10 that are the most popular. Um, are Is any of that important in in day-to-day life i don't i really don't think so yeah so uh by gender i mean gender as a social expression of yourself because gender is a social performance right uh and the this wasn't always the case right because Mm -hmm. uh back when societies were more primitive um and it was like if the man didn't if the man didn't work in the farms, then the people starved. So he was forced into that. But we have more freedom with uh, with our society. So mm-hmm. there's more room to uh, explore, I guess, explore um, where your sense of gender, where your performance of gender um, lies. Um, what's the thing you mentioned? Does does it lead? Does so like does that even matter? Is what you're saying? And I think. I think it probably does. Um, and I guess this would just come down to our subjective. Um, yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah, I, I guess I want to figure out where it matters. For example, I mean, this is another thing where it's more sexual orientation than anything, but like furries, um, because oh I don't, I, because I don't have any connection with furries. I'm just aware of what it is. Um, I don't ever need to know anything about furries. I don't have anything against it. People, people like straight up. I think I probably am more okay with people doing more things than most people. Um, but anyways, um, I just don't have any interest in it personally. I don't, I don't need to hear about it. Um, unless it became part of a philosophical conversation, like, or like this one. Um, so in that same sense, gender as gender expression, gender identity, all that kind of stuff. Um, it, I have no personal interest in it. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't mind people doing whatever they do. I also don't mind people creating their own made up languages like little kids do sometimes where they have like, like a pig Latin type thing. Um, anybody can do whatever they want to do. Um, what it comes down to is my involvement, but yeah, in the day-to-day life, aside from, pronouns existing aside from the idea of somebody saying like oh they went to the store together or oh he did this or she did that aside from the that in our vocabulary where would you say that gender is important um for one to another like so i i i mean like not an individual where like your gender david your whatever your gender is that you identify as 
not where that's important to you, but how it affects society person to person. Yeah. So on the risk of, of uh, being, so you're mentioning language, right? And I don't think that's the only, uh, that's not the only uh, way that gender is expressed. Um, I really hope not. That would be kind of sad. It also comes in things like you can tell, even though I've never turned on my camera um, and I've only given you uh, my first name, right? You can tell that uh, I'm male, right? Or I'm a yeah. man. That would that would have yeah, been my so, guess, yeah. Yeah, so um, it comes into things like vocal speech patterns, uh, like pitch, um, stuff like that. And it, all, it, it comes into, in, since I'm... A disconnected voice maybe maybe this doesn't ring as true but it also comes into presentation um such as what you wear um the clothes you like to wear and i know this might be this might seem like a really inconsequential way to boil down gender like the way you talk and the way you dress but um we are so social creatures and the way we dress and the way we talk actually it does constitute a pretty large amount of our social interactions yeah mm -hmm. Okay. Well, okay. So I have somebody pretty close to me that is trans born, born female, uh, is a man now. Um, I was, I was going to say male, but I'm trying to figure out the, the verbiage of what I think is best to word it. So uh born female, uh, does not want to be a woman, wants to be a man dresses as a man, but this person stays, um, identifying as a man stays having the, uh, the pronouns of he, him, but enjoys wearing dresses and enjoys uh, putting flowers in their hair, um, all kinds like wearing like high heels, but keeps identifying as a man, which is fine. Whatever. Anybody should do whatever they want. There's no there's no right way to do man made things like uh, and when I say man, I mean human. <laughs> and uh, man, uh, uh, man made things. Um, we create clothes. We create all this stuff. Um, how we do that should not affect anybody. But um, when I look at somebody, I don't know if they're non-binary or not, but if I think they're attractive, if somebody looks like a person I'm attracted to, I think they're attractive. I'm not being attracted to them based on their gender. I'm being attracted to them based on my attraction of how I'm attracted to somebody. So that person happened to have the look and then also whatever they added on accessory wise to their birthday suit um, happen to work um, for me visually. And so in that sense of a huge part of our lives is finding mates and who we're attracted to and how we visualize people. If we don't visualize people as just, oh, here's a coworker of mine, or here's just a random person in my way until I can pass them. We visualize them as either creating friends, which in a lot of cases, the gender doesn't matter or the sex gender or sex doesn't matter. But then when it's sexual attraction, it's just what we happen to see. Um, which I would connect that more with sex than anything, but also I just connect that with the existence of a person. Um, so I don't, I, sorry, I, I was talking about two different topics and got off track a little bit, but I don't, um, I don't view, oh, that's right. I was talking about my, um, my family member and that they call themselves man, he, him and wear yeah, dresses. Yeah. So I, I yeah. guess when everybody is just like, everything's out yeah. the window, I don't think there should be rules. I don't care if a man wears dresses or if a if somebody is it's female is now male and wears dresses, which people might just look at that as the original fee. Yeah, none of that matters to me. But I I feel like it doesn't make sense to me for me to hop on board to the details that I don't care to be involved with, if it's all seemingly nonsense is a bad word but for lack of a better word and i want to stop talking um <laughs> nonsense and then i'll let you, what, what are your thoughts on that yeah so first uh the the person you're close to family member uh, yeah either way um um so his expression of gender um his expression of being a man um it might not line up with the traditional expression of being a man um in the sense of you know macho does not wear dress, does not wear heels. Um, but that's the that's the whole point with gender. Uh, it's very fluid in the sense that you can, in the sense that you wouldn't call, uh, if you had a son, I don't know, but if you had a son that wants to play with dolls, you wouldn't instantly, you wouldn't jump to call, call, uh, call him a girl, right? 
So uh, that's just an element of who they are and what they want to do. Um, yeah. So that's so <clears throat> uh, going on to pronoun talk. So I guess I'll just start off with uh, I don't think uh, pronouns should be codified into law in the sense that um, if you misgender someone, you 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 go to jail. Um, I think that is one like one uh, misgendering someone. Uh, if you misgender me, I would I would not give a I would not care. Um, and and it wouldn't be illegal either. It would just be seen as rude. But that's the that's the main thing for the trans movement. It's social acceptance, and then it's also, um, and then afterwards, it's legal legal protection in the in the way that, and um, so legal protection. Uh, I guess not necessarily for pronouns, but for definitely for stuff like gender reassignment sh- surgery and stuff like that, which I think you would agree. Um, and I, I don't think this has to be an absolute, but definitely in the case of an adult, you would agree that they should be able to go undergo gender reassignment surgery if they want, right? Um, yeah, I think so. I think there's a, I've heard arguments that make me unsure which things um, should be, um, what's the word? Um, you know, so like uh, drinking alcohol is 21 and there's, there's various different things that can adjust like s- driving a car is 16. So something that we think of being done at adult age, it's not always 18. But yes, in general, um, it, it, unless an argument gets in the way of a certain thing, like something more unchangeable then yes. Uh, anybody beyond 25, unless there's some scientific research that discovers that brains aren't developed past 25, um, I would say past 25, um, anybody can do anything they want. They can have their leg amputated. Right, right. Well, uh, I don't know about that one, but <laughs> I guess it, I guess it would come down to a doctor agreeing to do it, which I hope one wouldn't. But um, well, uh, so the the issue the issue with pronouns is um, it, the push is for it to be seen as socially unacceptable to misgender someone, and that that doesn't mean um, you know your house burns down. We burn your house down in a fire if you misgender someone, because it's not always apparent. As you mentioned, uh, it's not always apparent, and non-binary people in particular, it's not always apparent. Um, and um, I also well, want to push back. I would say for yeah. non-binary people, it cannot be apparent, right? I mean, somebody pe- people that mock non-binary people because they, oh, if you got blue hair and you look androgynous or whatever, but to be somebody that goes by they them, and to be somebody that doesn't view yourself as a gender, I don't think it can be apparent, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess, I, I, I guess, I am kind of tapped into it, so I could guess, but I couldn't say with any certainty. For so, sure. yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so, it, so, like, let's say you misgender someone the first time, and they politely, uh, they politely correct you on what their pronouns are. That should be the extent of it. Um, and then, if you continue to misgender them afterwards, which I don't think you would, but just as an example, um, if you continue to, then there could be some social repercussions you would be seen as someone that's disrespectful um and disrespectful in a bigoted way towards trans people so that's that's kind of the deal with pronouns um in my mind um and i know there are people that are pushing for legal ramifications if you do that um i know jordan peterson fame became famous for uh, bill c16 that sort of thing but um i believe most trans people I believe most trans people are very accepting of the fact that um, these mistakes can happen. Um, It's not always apparent and they're happy to just let things go with one, one correction. um, If that's as far as it goes. Yeah. Well, so, so my concern is the idea of, of being considered doing something wrong when it comes to the idea of being told how to be Um, like, we, we we all have our different interests. We all have our different things. Kind of like I was saying, I have no interest in football. So okay. uh, I, I don't I don't have any interest in talking about football. If, if somebody asked me if I liked football and I told them no or whatever, I wouldn't be mad that they asked me if I like football. But I, I just – I don't like football, so I don't have any interest in talking about it. Um, I have no interest in anybody's gender identity. I have no interest – it's just for me personally. I do have interest in things where if people heard me talking about it, they would say that, oh gosh, how boring. I don't want to talk about that. They don't have interest in that. 
Um, but gender identity is a thing that I just, I don't, I don't, and same, same with sexual orientation. So, uh, so I'm married. I have no interest in uh, dating people or finding anybody for sexual reasons. So I don't ever need to know anybody's sexual orientation aside from if I was like setting somebody up on a date, which I don't do. Um, so I don't need, I don't need that. So the idea that I'm, I plan on living my life. Well, let me throw in one other element. I'm going to say the word now because uh, we're talking about this, but I absolutely hate the word mutual it's for some reason the word mutual feels horrible in my mouth and i don't like saying the word so i i don't say the word i usually skip over the word i find a different word that means the same thing and so i don't i don't want to be told oh you need to use the word mutual here i just don't i just don't like it and different people um have different words they don't like and things here and there I don't want to offend anybody. I want to live my life just having a good life. But if if somebody that I'm just talking about how I would talk about in every normal day life and I say, oh, uh, he went over here and did this thing. If somebody said like, oh, where, where's my friend Bill? And uh, I, I knew that they had a friend Bill. I knew the friend Bill was there, but I don't know these people personally. Just the person that asked me where he's at, I would <laughs> like right there. I would say, oh, he went over there. And then somebody would be like, oh, it's they. And then I have to go, okay, now I need to figure out how to use they in a sentence and formulate this whole thing. And uh, it it's it's probably really easy for people that want to do it and have done it. But I don't want to be told how to how to talk, if that makes sense. Um, even to a level of something like somebody's name. If somebody is uh, from a foreign country and they – their name is a really weird and hard to pronounce, like Wallaptula. And somebody says, like, oh, oh, where'd my friend go or whatever? And I'm like, oh, Wallaptuma went over here. And they're like, no, it's Tuwa. And there's something, and I'm like, oh, I can't quite figure that out. Sorry. But, uh, anyways, they went over here. I don't want to be forced to be like, I don't want to be considered. Nobody's forcing. I, we can both agree we don't need to talk about the legal side of it. But, I shouldn't be obligated, I don't think anyways, and I don't think anybody else should, to be thought of as morally better or worse because of not having interest in a thing, if that makes sense. It would be a, it would be a social, uh, not even an obligation, it would be a social pressure um, in the sense that if you if you mispronounce, well, my, my name's pretty hard to mispronounce, but if you, mis, if you uh, mispronounce, uh, someone, someone whose name that you don't initially, you, it, it, it's, it doesn't, it, uh, it's not, um, it's not, uh, easily apparent how to pronounce it. Um, and English is already not easily apparent on how to pronounce things. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you, if you mispronounce it the first time and then someone corrects you, um, you can make the choice of whether, uh, the social pressures of, uh, continuing to mispronounce it, even though you are aware of how it's pronounced versus, um, uh, I guess the freedoms or, or whatever, whatever, uh, whatever you attribute to not having to, um, uh, keep in mind what the correct pronounce pronunciation is, is, um, that's the choice you can make. Um, and what the, the trans movement is advocating for is that, um, uh, because there are there are legitimately people and legitimately people in quite high uh, positions of power, positions of uh, fame. I, I guess I'll bring up Ben Shapiro again. Ben Shapiro would, uh, well, he says he would privately uh, do it, but in the, in a in a public setting he wouldn't. Um, so people are saying that that should be seen as unacceptable, and clearly it's not. Um, uh, I I think you would agree that it's not seen universally as uh, disrespectful. It feels universally to uh, my surroundings, but you're probably right. It's probably not universal. Yeah, so um, that's kind of the idea of what transphobia actually is. It's not that it's not even that you would necessarily treat a trans person disrespectfully, but would you contribute to uh, would you contribute to an, an environment that's hostile to trans people? Um, so, in the sense, in the sense of refusing to respect their pronouns you're refusing to respect their gender identity um and you know this is all this is all like 
you in the royal sense. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you would. Um, I don't think you would. Yeah. I think you're a decent person. <laughs> Thank you. Um, No, I I think I am too. And uh, we all have our different levels. But I guess what I would say is similar to conception with when it comes to abortion being a cutoff that makes sense and breathing being a cutoff that makes sense with with this, you have to look at or at least I think you have to look at um, the extremes. So if a friend came to you tomorrow and said, Hey, from now on, um, I'd really like you to use a uh, Z Zim for my pronouns. So uh, Neo pronouns, I'm guessing you're familiar with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I know they're not common. It's the outliers. It's kind of like when you talk about abortion and people talk about the third trimester abortions, but I, I think it's important to look at what's reasonable. So uh, would you do Z Zim for your friend? Even, 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 uh, even trans people uh, are, undecided on neo pronouns um personally i would not um so these neo pronouns are used for well if they're not being used for dumb re- i had someone in my high school uh use the pronouns t and leaf okay. and uh, uh like I just, in a serious way like they well, wanted that well uh z or not well t got mad at me for not using it so i guess so okay um uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, T T slash leaf, and it's just hard because uh, when you when you think of pronouns, there's he hit he, uh, he him his uh, she her hers mm-hmm. they them theirs. There's a there's a uh, there's the last one there is uh, the uh, that's like the possessive. Uh, mm-hmm. So when when I'm at, when I'm when I'm like saying a sentence um, and I'm using T slash leaf's pronouns in a possessive man, like leaf is you know so neo pronouns in short or neo pronouns not uh very contentious even within the trans community personally i would not um he him she her and if you don't identify with either they them is fine to me um Mm -hmm. everything else no uh and but i could be convinced but at the moment no yeah so so that's that's kind of where i'm at where i think um you know it's fine if people want to get on board with this but not getting on board for the neo pronoun is kind of how I view some people not getting on board for the they them thing. Um, each individual has their different thing for what they want to do or not want to do. And that's why this whole thing is kind of a strange thing is we're not used to people telling us what we can and can't do, but especially what we need to do, what we need to replace something with, like telling somebody like, when you show up at my house, I need you to always wear green or you need to do this or that. Um, and if somebody does not want to do a thing that's asked for them to add, I, f- I feel like it, I, I think it's very unreasonable to view that as, as morally unacceptable. Um, yeah. So this gets into h- how you think social change is facilitated. Um, mm-hmm. So there's, uh, so there's, there's a line of Marxist thinking that, that says that radical is inherently good. Um, and a lot of people hear that and they'll instantly disagree because radical sounds pretty bad and inherently good sounds like the opposite of pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what that means is in order to affect social change, you need to do it through force. And maybe that's not necessarily the force in in the sense of me punch you, but, Mm -hmm. um, force in the sense of, uh, either institutional force, social force, or if it ends up being the case, physical force which happens more than you might think so for example when you say force uh, do you do you mean pressure pressure like, yeah that works too are you yeah. using it synonymously okay I, I just wanted to make sure okay yeah so for example uh gay rights uh, uh or actually i think i think a better one since the history is more universally known um uh, uh, what's it called why am i uh, civil rights the civil rights acts um okay. so for african americans um how do you think that happened? Um, well, that one would, depending on which elements you're talking about, are kind of a legal force. Um, right. Like, like, so the idea of having a store, it be illegal for a store to say whites only. Um, I think right. that's a, that's a complicated um, situation. <laughs> right. But yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I think um, Sam Harris says it better than I can say it. So I could uh, link you to uh, hearing him talk about it. It's the first time I switched over on the gay cake idea where in certain situations, when you have a large portion of people based on 
um, a way they were born are, are treated a certain way, you might need to take away somebody's legal freedom. So take away the legal freedom to, uh, to say a certain race or religion or sexual orientation can't enter your building. Um, so the government might need to step in and say too many people are negatively affected by this. And then you, you have to change that up. Um, and so anyways, I don't want to get too far into the weeds, but yes, yeah, so, so something like affirmative action, uh, to try to adjust something that's drastic, you need to throw in a drastic measure and, uh, which I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on a form affirmative action with, um, the whole Asian college thing, uh -huh. <laughs> um, but we don't need to get into that unless you think it can tie in. Um, um, I can just, I can just quickly answer right here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go for it. To me, uh, affirmative action doesn't achieve what it, what it, what its stated goal is. Uh, and, and the, so I'm Asian. Usually when people say that it's when, it, when Asians say that in particular, it's in the sense that. Um, but what I, well, it's in, or I, I guess I'll just say what, what sense I think it is. So Cornell actually did um, kind of like a poll of, uh, of students that identify as black. Um, so there was actually, according to uh, like affirmative action standards, well, there's, there's no standards in there, but um, according to, let's say like the average of how many black students are in the institution um, and uh, institutions across the U.S., it was uh, Cornell was on par or possibly better, but then when they looked into the breakdown of uh, those students that are black um, and you know what their origins are, and there's there was actually a lot of students that are uh, from particularly wealthy families from South Africa um, that uh, immigrated or transferred, immigrated whatever whatever the word is to Cornell uh, to get an education. And in the sense that affirmative action was meant to help uh, balance, uh, legally it doesn't help do that, but in the in the social sense that it's helped to sort of correct. No, that's not that's not the right verbiage. Uh, in the sense that it's to help account for centuries of systemic racism, um, systemic racism that even continues today. Uh, it's supposed to help account for that. Um, so primarily who it's, who it's supposed to benefit are African Americans that, uh, whose ancestors were not able to build up wealth, um, due to being slaves and who can continue to suffer, um, from, uh, depending on what your belief of what your level of belief in systemic racism, at the very least, they suffer from the echoes of that racist time. And then if you, if you're, uh, if you believe in systemic racism, continue to, to, face systemic oppression so in that sense i don't think it's helpful because um they're just looking at race when that's not the point yeah that's not the whole point yeah well and isn't there an element that i i thought you might um, have a take on where if you're black you get in with a lower score and then there's a certain score for white but then if you're asian you have it's, to, yeah it's even you lower. have to reach a, like this <laughs> Oh, it's crazy. Higher, yeah. yeah, you have to reach yeah, this crazy yeah. level. And there was this thing with Harvard where um, they were oh, yeah. they're essentially yeah. um, having a quota met for black people going in. So Asian people that had better test scores were not allowed in on higher rates was, than white or black. I don't think it was a quota. It was more of their subjective personality assessment where they would just uh, mysteriously, they would just rank Asians as unexciting on average. Um, compared oh, okay. to white and black people, which is quite, quite uh, concerning. I would say that. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. So, so I guess that, that, that's my uh, initial thoughts when you said the civil rights thing, did right. I take that a different route than you were intending? Yeah. So um, that's true. Like civil rights, the civil rights act was the culmination of that, but everything leading up to it. So there was social pressure in the form of protests. There was literal physical uh, pressure in the form of riots, which Martin Luther King Jr. has called the voice of the unheard, the voice of the oppre mm -hmm. unheard oppressed one of the, one of the two, same thing. Um, there was uh, so th there's physical force and there's social force applied to make that final legal force happened to make to facilitate social change um so tying this back to, yeah go ahead i just i think that's complicated i don't think it's quite so simple there's there's various different ways 
to look at it. So I don't want to agree that the riots um, being the voice of um, the unheard led to change or, you know, th- there's various there's various different um, ways. I, I, I don't know. I've been reading a lot of Thomas Sowell lately, and it doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, all his thoughts aren't necessarily right. But he'll he'll analyze different time periods like in the in the mid 50s. Um, Jackie Robinson being the first black uh, baseball player was amongst white fans was, was the second most popular baseball player in all of human history at that point. And then you'd have all these different things where you'd look at different levels of like how many black people um, owned homes and various different things that happened um, in the thirties and forties and fifties climbing. So while there were issues, especially in the South and you had different separations, you still saw effects that were better at one point. And then when the civil rights movement hits and a lot of things get better, other things get worse. So I would just call it complicated enough that I don't want to just blanketly state that social pressures led to, uh, good all around but i get the basic idea so we can bounce off of it i just wanted to be clear on that yeah so uh to me i would so um if 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 everything could just be handled handled legally then it should have already been handled legally but it wasn't that wasn't the case the 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 supreme court upheld brown versus board where which was or was brown versus board the one that made uh segregation illegal I think it was. Um, but uh, initially, um, the law, the the government, the the, le- the legal apparatus, they upheld that separate but equal was um, fair, right? Yeah. So, um, and it wasn't. That That's the whole point. Um, segregation was not good. So uh, it took it took that social pressure. Um, to me, it seems obvious that it took social pressure and perhaps even physical pressure to then uh compel the uh the legislative apparatus to then do brown versus board to outlaw that um i guess maybe it's not as obvious to you though Mm -hmm. um i mean it depends on the outcome it depends on what what we're referring to if we're if we're thinking that things need to legally change a certain way to make sure everybody can equally um access goods then that's one thing. So to removing the ability, having a, a whites only drinking fountain, a whites only bathroom, a store that says blacks can't enter. Um, so that's one thing. I think it's complicated, but I think I think that's one thing. Removing something where people can't get certain jobs, therefore you live in a society, but you can't make money, you can't um, you can't survive because shelter stuff like that. Um, I would say that those actions are very different from somebody wanting a certain, what they consider respect, but I, I, I get the basic idea. If you think it okay. will connect in. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so social change in that case, um, I think was instituted top down for, uh, for the civil rights act for the civil rights movement, civil rights act. That was top down. There were plenty of people in the South that, did not agree with that and they still don't agree with it looking just looking at it demographically they still don't agree uh uh so that's that's kind of the idea with um acceptance of trans people that it needs to be instituted top down um do do you agree that social change is possible from bottom up or do you Um, think that uh social change is possible from bottom up i think that any social change that just comes to emotions should always be bottom up. Um, I don't think there should, uh, de- I mean, depending on what we mean by that, I, I don't really use that term that often. So um, if top down's referring to top uh, down is le- yeah, legal pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, top down can also uh, include legal pressure, social pressure. Like it, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing illegal about cheating on your wife, but Mm-hmm. Well, no, there's not. Um, I know you can get divorced and infidelity can be, but there's nothing illegal about it. You're not going to get charged with it, but there's yeah. a great social pressure not to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think anything like that, I don't think the social pressure needs to come from the government or anything, um, depending on what it is. Um, I think there could maybe be pushes for uh, healthy eating or something that is probably best announced from the government in different forms. But yeah, for the most part, anything, anything that's just somebody 
feeling like I, I don't know anybody feeling, uh, so the, when it comes to ideas like uh, hate speech or something, it's like I don't want to top down like, OK, we're making it illegal to say retard because that's the only way we can stop people from saying it. I'm only saying it just to describe this, by the way. I don't use that word. Um, but uh, I so so I think anything that comes with um, h- how something could like offend somebody shouldn't shouldn't be top down. Uh, top that, down. Kind, that kind of change. Top down can be, I think you mentioned social pressure from the government and top down could be just social pressure in general. So uh, let me give you an example of, um, and it doesn't even have to be like every, the mob tells you not to do it. And that's the social pressure. Uh, for example, um, have you seen everything that's going on, going on with Andrew Tate? Uh, yeah, um, uh, I'm little blips. I don't know too much yeah. about them, but yeah, I got the basic Yeah, no. Idea. So this example doesn't take too much. So there, um, uh, there, there was a woman who, who like made a TikTok, um, and she was talking about how, um, her brother was radicalized by Andrew Tate because he is, he is definitely a radical and not in the good way. Mm-hmm. Um, her brother was radicalized by Andrew Tate and the way she dealt with it wasn't bottom up from, for, for like debating uh what's wrong with andrew's andrew's ideas how it's harmful the way she dealt with it was by simply just cutting him out um she wouldn't talk to him unless absolutely necessary uh so that that i would that's a social pressure um as in i will not talk to you if you subscribe to these ideas um and that actually ended up working uh afterwards uh and then there's also like the fact that he got arrested and all that that might have helped but he uh she de-radicalized them through top down. Um, so that's I'm the sure example that I want to give with. I'm sure that works yeah. both ways though. I, I'm sure people um, could do the same thing to somebody with a good idea. Um, well, let, let me give you an example of what I, I think um, kind of comparing to the civil rights thing. So my wife has, Oh, nah. now I can't even make a hypothetical. Well, I don't care. Okay. So, <laughs> so my wife has, let's just say an uncle, that is okay. uh is racist like um or at least he was at the point of the story i'm telling so on facebook he he had like the n word uh it, oh and not and not not just in a playful way because that's that's a whole complicated story too but just specifically talking about like barack obama or something and saying saying the n word oh. and just like <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah um so very racist not not good business um and the idea mm-hmm. of me saying like i think you went too far with this this re- this I, this is this is uh not something i want to be associated with so i'm gonna like delete you from facebook or whatever and then even though he feels how he feels he might think mm-hmm. okay because i'm being i'm having this social pressure from friends and family members uh wanting to remove me on social media and this and that he's going to not say racist things like that he's going to keep his racism to himself um so i don't know top down bottom up whatever but uh the i do i do recognize that if people are going to people are going to act how they're going to act and people reacting to somebody can make that person change how they are i don't think most people feel comfortable being racist uh in america at least from what i've noticed so i i probably shouldn't say in america i could say at least in oregon which is where i live and uh, in a lot of places i think even racist people they don't necessarily feel comfortable most of them doing it in public doing it on social media unless they're like hidden on like some fake account or something like that. And yeah. uh, I, I'm kind of torn on if I like that or not. I almost kind of want people to show their colors so I can know who to stay away from. But there's also kind of something cool about that, knowing that we've won us people that want racism to uh, kind of die down, disappear. We want people of different races to not feel offended by people being assholes we know we we won in the sense that even for the people that are racist, they don't feel comfortable doing it in public. Um, so I, I think that probably ties in. But I I think it's bad to make people feel like they are bad for not wanting to give into the they, they them thing in the same sense that I'm sure many people would think it's horrible to treat you bad for not wanting to give in to neo pronouns. Yeah, so it comes down to, uh, and unfortunately, it does come down to what the general 
population believes is correct. So mm. uh, people like to make a lot of fuss about misgendering and stuff like that. And um, it's true in the sense that if you misgender someone while you're acting and you're like, let's say you're at your job and you just, and it, it doesn't have to be while you're on the job. Maybe you uh, misgendered someone um, and then uh, just continued misgendering them after. And then that gets, that gets to your boss somehow. And mm -hmm. then your boss fires you like, so people, that's the kind of thing people have in mind. Um, and that's, that's, that goes beyond just the social pressure. It goes to an actual one that affects your livelihood. Um, but uh, the thing I, I think that most people don't really have to worry about it because uh, most people just don't have trans friends. It's not a very common concept. Uh, yeah. Um. I'd say it's more philosophical than anything. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, you're right. You don't come into too much contact with it. But I think yeah. it's worth figuring out because I really think it's I, I think it's bad. I, I, I've i wrestled with it back and forth. I What's think bad? this I think the idea of even wanting somebody to use uh, words for you, asking somebody to use words for you, um, I think is bad. Um, I think in the same sense of asking somebody to use the neo ones, like the tree and T and whatever your friend, <laughs> wanted, um, it, it's not, I don't think it's much different than saying like, I'm not going to be your friend unless you only wear green around me. Um, you know, everybody can have their different levels of what they do. But, uh, when my, I have a six year old and, uh, and then okay. my, um, what she loves hanging out with, uh, her cousin, who's actually our neighbor and he's five. And whenever, um, she wants him to do something, uh, or the other way around um the the other one might not want to do it and what i what i always tell them is like oh you can ask them if they want to do it or whatever but you can't make them do it like like what you want to do like they can decide if they want it do they want a hug right now no you can't make them give you a hug you can't make them play this game if they don't want to play it they have you don't you don't make them play it so in that same sense if um if my kid came to me and said, um, oh, I want you to, instead of talking how you normally talk, I want you to use they, them, or even something like whenever I enter the room, I want you to say um, potato. Um, and then after I you say potato, then the conversation can go on. And I don't need you to say potato again until you don't see me. And then you see me again, like anything like that. I would, t I would tell my kid, um, like, I need you, I need to teach you how to be good in our society. I need you to know you can't go ask people to change how they are. You are you, you do what you want to do. And you can, if you, if you and your friends really like to make fun of each other, you have your game figured out where you make fun of each other, but don't make fun of other people that aren't part of the game. And all, so, so I think it's more of a moral thing where I actually think there is a slight moral negativity to even recommend somebody change how they speak for you okay uh i want to go back to something you said um you mentioned uh you mentioned that uh i think you said uh you don't want someone to you it's it was something like you don't want someone to uh i guess regulate or encourage you to use language specifically for them what, what do you think Correct. the name is then uh yeah no name name is probably the the best argument for this whole thing and names are complicated, um. Yeah, I mean, so so in our society we have a way we speak. So in the same sense that I don't want to use they them in a way that to me doesn't sound good. Like I I know I use it when I'm talking about people that I haven't met yet, but to know somebody to know a person, and what gender I perceive them as to switch over to they them it's it's uh it's weird in how i learn to speak my language so within my culture and my language people have names and i'm aware of that i'm aware very rarely some people don't have a middle name but everybody's got a name everybody's got a last name except for singers like madonna and uh so i'm aware that this name thing exists and uh and so it's it's just it's part of life um if if I knew somebody that like constantly was changing their name all the time, like, like some people, um, 
Okay, so I have a kid. My my daughter's name is Charlie. Okay. Charlie. If uh if she wanted to change her name, um, like some people come up with nicknames, their friends come up with nicknames. Um, that could happen and people could call her that. But I'd say, like, oh, like you're Charlie to me. I that's I'm choosing my word for you. You I gave you this name, you're growing up with this name. That's my word for you. Um, I could I also call her Chuck sometimes. Now mm-hmm. I could be nice and not call her Chuck if it really bugs her. But uh, I probably wouldn't be nice and not call her 10 different things I want to call her um, just because she's wanting to pinpoint it down and be specific. Um, how, how we talk is how we talk. So um, if somehow names led to people not talking at all, then that is what it is. Um, I guess I'll stop rambling on that point. But I, I really just think like I, I – uh, so I have a trans nephew that I adjusted the name for. Um, Mm -hmm. and it didn't take too long. There's a few slip ups, but I got it figured out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that, that trans nephew changed their name again. And that trans nephew has a trans friend that has changed her name like four different times. And so it doesn't mean that it's every, it's not the majority necessarily, but the idea to get your brain used to somebody's name, it's kind of complicated. And I, I personally, just we each have our individual personal feelings on things and uh i don't think there's anything wrong with going like all right i'm not going to keep switching over names here and there i'm going to stick with this one i won't go back to the the deadest of dead names because it has this like it ends with an a sound or it has this because of masculine or feminine but i'm not hopping all over the place so i don't know if that makes sense no, I get I get what you mean, and that's why it's uh, that's why I don't agree. Even though, even at the risk of being called transphobic, that's why I don't agree with uh, dead naming, misgendering being uh, something that's protected legally, uh, because it's complicated stuff. Um, uh, and uh, and for sure, and for, I would never blame anyone for, especially if it, this is someone that they've, uh, especially if it's like the position of like a, a like a like a father and a daughter, or like father and child where they've grown up for however many years, 14, 15 years, um, before that person was even aware of what their own name was, uh, calling them that, then I would never, I would never even think it to be unreasonable to slip up at least a couple times. Um, it's just, uh, the way, uh, so, um, there are, there are some trans people that think it should be enshrined into the law and we both disagree, um, for sure. Um, the way that pronouns are conceptualized is, I think, similar to names in that the culture, uh, the, the 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 trans movement wants to change the culture into something that uh, that um, gives the same social protection to names. Because you would you would think it to be pretty rude to call someone something that's not their name, right? Um, yeah, for the most part. Um, again, like I told you, if if it's something that sounds so foreign. <laughs> that I couldn't figure it out or couldn't roll R's or something. I, yeah, yeah. I might just try to not use their name similar to if I was in a work setting and it was they, them, I wouldn't use a pronoun at all. I wouldn't say the one to how they look to me. I would just use their name. Um, but if, it, if I was going to normally use a name, I, I just say like, Hey, are you going to go here instead of, Hey, Michael, are you going to go here? Um, mm-hmm. And when talking about them, I don't, I don't know it depending on, if they were weird about it, I might just not want to be friends with somebody that I, I can't pronounce their names and I, they're going to be weird if I shorten it to like the first right. sound yeah. or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about, I don't know about first sound, but um, if, if someone's going to be weird about like you not being able to roll R's, I would, I would find that unreasonable. I think most people would find that unreasonable. Mm-hmm. So it does come down to whether you're willing to put trust in, in, uh, in, in, in like, uh, I don't want to say the masses in the general consensus of the consensus of the public. And I should mention right now that the, that it might seem like uh, there's a push for uh, you to be accepting of pronouns, but like, just generally speaking, I don't think most people really care uh, because they don't have to. Um, but um, there's, there's a desire to change the culture uh, so that pronouns are accepted and something that should be respected um, respect doesn't mean that you have to follow it universally. Uh, there's no legal, there's no legal ramifications to not, um, under at least, at least my conception of it. 
Um, but there are there is a, a social cost to it in the sense that people will see this as something you're disrespecting. Um, and then the question is, why are you disrespecting that? Um, and if it just comes down to simple mistake, then no problem. Everyone makes mistakes. No, no reason to, no reason to like go. Uh, well, I'll uh, guillotine with that. But um, if it's a consistent thing, then the question has to be asked: Why are you consistently disrespecting? Um, and you mentioned names as being uh, part of the culture, and that's just that. I believe that's the that's the goal. Um, I'm not trained myself, so I won't speak um, for that. But Making I believe it gender be, something... be part of the culture. Uh, not so much part of the. Or I think gender is already part of the culture. Uh, or I guess gender on this wide view, like like the the reason I have no interest in ever doing they them for anybody, and I've at least right now, um, is because I I just don't buy it. I don't believe it. I think I think it's a. Uh, I view it as rebellion, I guess. Um, that like I only go by he him because it's it's whatever. Who it's just it's just there. And I know people would say like, well, you line up with this, that, or whatever. But uh, I don't care if if I if I woke up in a woman's body tomorrow, I'd wake up in a woman's body. I'd just live my life out as a woman, and uh, <laughs> and I I use she her or whatever because because I don't care. It's not something of interest to me. I mm-hmm. I don't mind the idea of people being rebellious and trying to like fight the man or whatever. I just don't want to play into their game. Um, if I got convinced of like as as you probably assume, I'm a pretty logical person. Whether I have the right answer or not, I like I like to um, think about what makes sense. Is there good reason there? And I to me, it makes no sense to like you don't so, want. Yeah, sorry, go on here. Yeah. Yeah, so so essentially, you object to the existence of uh, non-binary people, then? Uh, not their existence. I think everybody exists how they are. They feel how they feel. I don't think they're wrong about their feelings. But um, I've actually ex- experimented with this, where I'll chat with non-binary people online, and I'll describe myself in full honesty, and they'll say, "Oh, yeah, you definitely seem like you're uh, gender fluid." Be, you know, I'll just talk about how, like, I, I don't like typical guy stuff. I don't like sports cars. I don't like football. I, you know, I, I don't, you know, different macho things I don't like or whatever. And there's plenty mm-hmm. of feminine things that I do like. And I know a lot of times people say, oh, well, it's not about that stuff. It's about this stuff and whatever. So anyways, it's, it's all over the board how people feel. But um, yeah. we all, everybody's on a spectrum of some kind. Masculinity exists. Femininity exists. And everybody's on some form of a spectrum. I just have no interest in the labels for that spectrum. Uh, now, I don't know what a world would look like if you couldn't tell people apart too well. Like right now, most dudes don't wear dresses. Uh, most ladies uh, have like long hair. Um, the, you know, there's some things where it seems kind of obvious. If we did what I'm asking for, which is just not add the they, them, any of that stuff, And uh, people just talk how they want. You perceive what you perceive. But let's say the majority of people decided they wanted to be more androgynous and dudes wore dresses and everything was all over the place. I don't know what I would say. I don't know if I would think there should just be one gender, uh, one one set of pronouns for everyone, they, them for everyone. Um, that seems reasonable even now, but it definitely seems reasonable when you can't tell people apart. But here's what I what I'm arguing is when you do that, if right now today I was able to convince everybody that is against pronoun change stuff, everybody to do they them for everyone, the non-binary people and the trans people, the the you know whatever five ten percent of people that are loudest about um, this kind of stuff would instantly a lot of them would say no i don't want to be called they them anymore i want to be called this and that would be the fight because i i don't i just don't buy it i think the idea is wanting to be rebellious maybe for rebellious years phase years um if i could help and change it i would quick but i don't think i don't think um people want i don't think these people want um people to actually change for them they want something to fight because uh humans like to fight yeah um maybe so there so this is uh, this is kind of something that i've seen They're like people will point to 
Uh, and I'll just use internet verbiage because it fits. But people point to a trans person they call cringe, and then they'll 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 think of that as um, they'll think of that at that as representative of trans people. But there's plenty of cringe people uh, that aren't trans that aren't that are uh, cishet, you know. Mm -hmm. um, when you say that uh, there's a desire for on the part of non-binary people to just uh, um, and I apologize for saying you don't believe in the existence of non-binary people. I, I should have said you don't believe in the existence existence of non-binary as a concept. Um, mm. But um, uh, when you say that people, when non-binary people uh, are rebellious, uh, I just can't agree. Um, at least conceptually, it's it's based on not identifying with either male or female. Um, that's kind of where I'm at there. But uh, why? What's the need? To, what What is the need to do that? Like, I, I'd say most things have a need. Um, if you're going, because you could just live your life, like, if somebody's born female and they feel like, oh, I don't, I don't really connect with females or males. I'm non-binary. Right. Yeah. What, that, that what would, would be... be the difference between their life doing that versus not doing that? What do they in, benefit in what, from? In, in what sense? Because um, if you're talking about like something that's huge, right? Um, something life altering. Um, it might be hard to conceptualize it from your position because mm -hmm. you're a, you're a male presenting man, so it's yeah. not like uh, I I don't think you have the problem of getting misgendered often. Mm -hmm. But um, there are people that um, as soon as uh, as soon as like elementary school, right, where they have you line up. And I don't know why the school did it, but I was I was hearing a, a story from a non-binary person and um, they had them line up boys and girls for some reason instead mm -hmm. of like, I don't know, like I, I think mine had just like a, a number system, but they had them line up boy, girl, and the person didn't know, didn't really know uh, which which one to go into. Um, so it, it, it might but seem why, trivial. Why did they why yeah. did they not? Uh, I mean, I couldn't answer. Uh, it's not. It's not a feeling that I've ever had. Um, well, I, they, I just mean like they. They. Do you mean they knew what they were, but because they felt like they didn't want to be that, they were thinking, "I want to not stand in the line," or they were raised by a person that uh, never gendered them, therefore they were they had no idea what was going on. Oh, so. I don't want to. I don't want to tell someone's story for them. But what oh, okay. what was con what was contained directly in in what I read was that um, their parents did. They were assigned male at birth, and um, uh, no mention about the parents. But um, it was just that they could see themselves going into either line and weren't sure which one to go into. So that might seem trivial, but um, for children, especially especially at a young age, that is quite a quite a quite a serious like emotions are quite a serious component of development um and just to go to the extreme of what uh what these feelings of uh alienation can lead to the the uh i think it's the second highest uh cause of death for teens are suicide mm -hmm. probably related to negative emotions and um that actually skyrocket like the the, the probability of self harm suicide suicidal ideate suicidal ideation is even higher amongst uh uh teens that identify as trans or non-binary so to mm -hmm. me it's not a trivial so when you ask what's the benefit right the benefit yeah. is in in not alienating um these people that are trans that are non-binary um and and um in terms of material consequences um i think you could see that in the the suicidal ideation self-harm statistics um and then you have to weigh that against the drawbacks and to me um i would question what drawbacks there are if any um and i don't know if you would agree with that hmm. um well there's a couple different ways to look at it um so drawbacks in um how we affect them versus them choosing to do it themselves i think the question i might have been asking was what's the benefit for them um but but really quickly, I do want to comment on the the suicidal ideation thing. Um, okay. I think a lot of people think, um, and there's no there's no answer for this, but in my mind, it's it's clear. 
um, or it's, it's likely at least um, that you're suicidal because you're trans is how it's usually thought of instead of you're suicidal and you're trans. Um, I, I think uh, if you take all the things that lead people to kill themselves and you had all those things happen to somebody that maybe they wouldn't normally have happened to, I don't think those people are going to kill themselves. Uh, we All of our brains are wired different ways. They think different ways. They have different things. I think the, uh, the having the mindset that truly does not have that will to live that our species has, that um, I would call it almost um, an abnormality. Um, or, uh, somebody can be born with nine fingers, but the human species has 10 fingers. Um, it, if 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 somebody um ha like does not have the will to live in their head there there there's there's something that's kind of off there now i think it's it's very important for us especially in our modern society to take care of those people we're back in the day you know, it didn't really matter but uh we do want to take care of those people but i don't think it's as simple uh now now i do think that different elements leading to one killing themselves that is capable of killing themselves. Like if somebody uh, cuts themselves because they like the feel, they, they want to feel something because they normally don't feel something. They have a lot of anxiety, depression, these things. Um, if they transition and they get accepted by all, they might not kill themselves, but they might continue to cut themselves because they enjoy the cutting themselves. And some people often, I wouldn't say the majority, but let's just say hypothetically, at least some people when they transition, even if they have um, top surgery, bottom surgery, uh, they might still kill themselves. I just think we need to keep in mind that our actions of how we treat them are isn't making the, the suicidal feelings necessarily go away. Those are in that person because that person was born with the ability to feel it to that level i'm i'm pretty sure possibly but there's definitely a social component to it as well um i don't think depression is literally a socially constructed uh disorder um it with like there's also there's there's the biological etiology in it of like the hippocampus being enlarged and all that but largely it's diagnosed socially um as in are you are these symptoms preventing you from um, having a fan or for participating in family life, participating in work? These are all kind of social constructions. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so I want to go back to what you mentioned about uh, people thinking of uh, of uh, trans people being suicidal because uh, they're being um, uh, because they're being, I don't know, like not accepted, basically, um, when you're not sure if that's the case. Is, does that sound right? Um, yeah, suicidal because they're trans, not suicidal and trans. Correct. Yeah. So there was statistics by the, the, uh, by the Trevor project that stated that, uh, suicidal, it was either ideation or attempts or success. I hate when successful attempts is used in reference to suicide, but successful attempts at suicide. Um, one of the three, uh, drastically uh decreased if there was one friend that was accepting uh actually now that i think about it, it must have been suicidal ideation um it drastically increased if there was uh one or it was one parent that was accepting and then um it it was there was also a large degree decrease if there was one friend that was accepting so mm -hmm. if we and the the problem with statistics is like you can't extrapolate like if it's a 20 percent de decrease with one parent is it a 40 percent decrease with two parents like you can't do that with statistics yeah. um well also could you could you admit yeah. one thing real quick not admit sorry that sounds funny but could um would you accept that th there are groups of people that like to talk about how mistreated they are they they almost get off on it um and so even though a lot of these people talking about this stuff truly feel it um I, I guess what I'm saying is I wouldn't be shocked if somebody at a teenage level that is feeling these things, they really feel in the wrong body and this kind of stuff. If they're asked a question like, oh, how many people support you or whatever, the answers aren't going to be um, 100% accurate. And um, 
so anyways, the, 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 a study in this form is kind of tricky. Um, just another element to it. So, uh, I guess to clarify, so you, you believe that, uh, could you repeat that actually? Yeah. So, so I'm just saying like, so like I, I have, um, I have a teenager and I got teenage, um, teenage uh nieces and nephews and stuff and then i see their friends and you know when I, sometimes we forget what it's like when we're, we're when we're younger and so when i hear these guys talk they embellish a lot they like be like oh i was i was in the bus and somebody said like oh you're trans right you should go kill yourself or whatever uh, half the time i hear these stories it's like okay something like that probably happened and the other half it's like somebody's saying outrageous things so i guess what i'm saying is if you get a bunch of uh, teenagers that are going through all this wild shit and uh, some of them are trans or some of them feel like they are going along with being trans because everybody they know is trans and they they're um, you know some of them are into cutting and doing these different things and they get asked by a project doing a study um, like how many times at school were you uh, called uh, like a hateful name or the, how many times were you uh misgendered the the answers are going to come out in a wild way like i know somebody that every time i hang out with them wh wherever we go whether it's like the the saturday market or just here there or whatever i always hear how many times they f they were misgendered there like they'll say oh I, yay today is great i was only misgendered this many times and I'll, okay. even he I'll even hear it when it's people that are they, them. Therefore, nobody that is a stranger to them would know they're they, them. So I, I guess I'm just saying that um, I would be curious to see how the studies are done, what their questions are they're being asked, and also do they have people in their lives that are truly supportive, but they don't technically view it as supportive because maybe they have a parent that loves them, cares about them, tries their hardest, but won't let them get top surgery when they're 13 or something. Do they then say, I don't even have a supportive parent? So. Yeah. So there's always complexities, especially with self-reported. Um, and this was a self-reported, uh, so they, they would they would uh they would pull uh, people and it's not like they're going around and checking if they had so well, there's no way to check it has to be self-reported um but that's kind of how all things go political polls it's self-reported um uh, if you've ever heard of like the 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 statistic about cops 40 percent of cops 40 percent of cops have engaged in domestic abuse that was self-reported um mm -hmm. So uh, I wouldn't rush to question the vote. Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, that was just interesting. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 kind of a meme, um, especially with uh, the the uh, defund the police movement. Like, just the people say like forty percent of cops, and then they just leave it. So it makes you question forty percent of cops what. So you look it up, and then you find that out. Anyway, um, so I personally. Uh, I have not checked out the study. I've not looked at the methodology. It's not my field of expertise. Uh, psychological studies aren't my field of expertise anyway. Uh, I would I would have to question um, just like how much do you think this is influencing the data, um, especially when the when the uh, the effects are so pronounced. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But anyway, uh, if we assume that that study at least has some validity validity to it, and no study will ever be perfectly valid, right? Um, but it has some validity to it, um, and it's it only takes one person, right? Mm -hmm. um, and even better if two, right? What 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 could then what could those numbers look like if we had if we had a society that was accepting? And that that's kind of the the purpose of the trans acceptance movement. I guess, um, I guess that's I guess my the concern is there's a difference between acceptance and being asked to change yourself like like really I, like i hope i hope you can think about that and like kind of visualize it how i mean that because being asked by somebody to go from calling somebody she her to he him is something like being willing to accept that somebody's gay and not treat them bad it's it's just accepting somebody 
and you you know you can't quite figure out you know you you feel weird you feel like their their brain must be off or something if they feel like they need to try to look like this other gender even though they maybe can't achieve it or something and then you just accept it but the idea of having somebody need to change the way their language works the way they use they them meaning plural um, or singular if they aren't familiar with who's being talked about being asked to use it about something they're talked about um, that they do know about I don't I don't think it's as simple as just saying like let's do this thing it's what's going to be asked next and you you're already saying that you wouldn't do the thing that's asked next if hypothetically that's asked next and I guess I'm just saying this one I don't know how it caught it got caught on I don't think it should have caught on. I I think if it wasn't for the internet, it would have been shut down anytime anybody individually tried to create it. But I, I guess I think it's good to recognize if somebody is willing to be accepting of all religious people, they're not gonna they're not gonna like spit on somebody because they're wearing a turban or something. And they're accepting of all people of different races, they're not gonna be like, oh, I can't wait till this black guy's out of my store. And they're accepting of different genders. They don't think women need to be cooking, uh, cooking and cleaning. And they're accepting of people being gay. They're just accepting of all these things. They're accepting of people being trans. But their one thing is that they just don't want to have to figure out how to use they, them. I, that seems so reasonable to me that it makes the other angle seem so unreasonable to me that – you know, like when it when is it gonna stop? I feel like people run out of things to be bothered by, and then they create a new thing. And if that's not the case, I guess I'm very curious to to continue that element of the conversation when the new thing does come up. So, uh, just sort of unrelated. Let me run something by you first. So, okay. I actually, I actually, on a technical level, I've never been. I've I've never been that opposed to they I've never oh, in general I've never been opposed to they them usage but mm -hmm. um, just like on a grammatical technical level uh, I haven't either so people bring up that they them is as a uh, is a plural and you're using it for the singular but they like you can use it in the sense of uh, when you don't know it, someone's gender so if someone's mm -hmm. literally in like a ski mask hoodie all of that and you don't know who they are you can't even see who they are. Um, and you have yeah. to give a police report. Uh, I saw a person. I don't know who. I don't know, and I don't know who they were. Well, I don't know who they were, but yeah, they were running that way. Yeah. Yeah. So in that sense, when the gender is unknown, um, that's an appropriate grammatical usage of it. When it comes to non-binary people, their gender isn't known. It it's not. It doesn't align with male. It doesn't align with female. Um, some people say it's somewhere in between, and then others, other people say that it's actually uh, nowhere on the spectrum. Some people say it's a mixture of both. It, but in any case, it's not. Yeah, I think that's yeah, the hookup, it, though. Like, I, I think that's the the issue is people talk based on their perception. They don't they don't talk based on somebody saying I have these me this mental disorder. They they see somebody and they they uh, see like right now I'm saying they because I'm talking about this uh, an unknown person and that that's how I learned to talk that's how these people learn to talk as well and so when you do know the people and you know like somebody and you didn't find out that they switched over to they them or whatever if somebody if if you're talking about uh, if you're talking with somebody about your two nephews that came over and somebody's like uh, talking about one of them and says, oh, they went to the store referring to them as they them because in the singular, then the mind, at least like mine that hasn't switched over to using the them singular would go, oh, they both went. Oh, wait, one went like so it kind of has this complicated thing where it's, I think it's perfectly natural for how most people that speak English, at least in America, um, use it in um, a singular way when they are not familiar with who's being talked about. And I, I guess the thing is, I think a lot of people think that some people are just being transphobic and stubborn. I hope people recognize that it really truly is just hard to do it. I, I would never do it just, just to, because it's simple and I I'd, I'd go, Oh, this is easy to do, but I don't want to give into them. 
Like I, I think it's super complicated. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely a very English conversation. Uh, I speak Spanish. Well, okay. I, I don't speak Spanish, but I can read and comprehend it decently well. Uh, and uh, gender pronouns are pretty much neutral. Um, it's, it actually sounds on net. So let's say I have a sentence. Um, my friend works at a corporation. She is an accountant, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we, so, uh, the way you say that in Spanish is uh, tango un. Uh, well, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get laughed at by any Spanish. I, I know my accent's horrible. Tango uh, un amiga. Um, so in that sense, the the pronoun is in amig amiga. Like there's amigo for male and there's amiga for uh, female. Yeah. Um, but sh uh, she works at a corporation. Um, so there's there's two ways of doing that. Uh, ella. Uh, trabaja so uh the 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 word to to work is trabajar um and then you conjugate the ar at the end into um if you're talking about yourself it's oh if you're talking about like you as in you work there it's us he she is uh uh um they is uh is uh aron i think or on but in any case, uh, in Spanish, uh, you would actually just drop the a, uh, the she, um, and it would just be contained within the verb itself. So yeah, this is a very English conversation. Um, and yeah, that's definitely going to be a complicated thing if the trans acceptance movement goes global. <laughs> yeah, um, right, yeah. Uh, I guess, um, yeah, I guess, like, so I find it completely reasonable, especially as an older person like me, I've... Well, actually, I was uh, just on a tangent. I was part of the class of 2020. So I graduated high school in 2020. Mm -hmm. Pretty much none of this um, that I heard about in my school. Um, things must have changed a lot over COVID because uh, um, I, I'm still in contact with some of my friends. And um, they have stuff like uh, the there's uh, every counselor has an LG. Like, they have a sticker that says that says LGBTQ plus safe zone. Um they have uh they have a trans cheerleader on the on the team now um um and i think uh there's um it used to not be allowed but now there's queer literature in like the upper level eight um you know about ap courses right mm -hmm. yeah yeah ap like ap language and comp a ap uh, literature um so that's that's just a tangent but um i i'm like i think it's not unreasonable at all for uh for um for to to see this as an as like a, a pretty severe or not not severe pretty significant adjustment to make mm -hmm. um would would you say that it would if i switched over to using they them for everyone and i didn't use she or he ever again i basically okay. treated i think uh, in thailand they ha that's how um pronouns work it's just one for everyone if i did that would you call that reasonable and if anybody was bothered by me doing that that they were being unreasonable if if uh so if if you so you just called everyone they them and then i i identify he him um would i find that unreasonable um would you find it w yeah would you find it reasonable for me to do that for everyone and then also if somebody found it unreasonable for me to do that would you call that person unreasonable um i would say uh i would say uh well like so he him she her that's not new um mm -hmm. but yeah i mean i guess if you were to just take a gender neutral approach to all of it uh because i feel like that's kind of what i want like i i I'm cool with what's here now, just he, him, she, her. But uh, if it made people happy, we could. I would be fine with English, just changing it over to having one pronoun that was just for everyone. But the problem is then there will be people that will say, whether it's trans people or not, but I think it mostly likely would be trans people, would say, I'm trans and I'm he, him, or I'm trans and I'm she, her. And they would say, I don't want you to refer to me as they, them. And that's about the extent of what I think is reasonable to give is to have a gender neutral thing. And if that's not accepted, I don't know. 
Yeah, I guess uh, I guess I would just say that I don't actually think it would be mostly trans people because uh, I, I, I feel like there's a lot of guys who uh, really, especially like the Andrew Tate fan types, they really identify mm -hmm. as, you know, with that masculine image. I think yeah, they would be the one subject. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, it's so uh, I guess it's just something's up because I do have to go um, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess it's it is confusing, um, and a lot of it involves social change. It'll be regulated. Um, and neither of us agree with legal regulations, but it'll mm -hmm. be based on um, uh, it, it'll be based on like social changes. So that that requires you to place trust in the the general consensus, which I can understand being apprehensive of. Um, mm -hmm. This could make for definitely a great conversation uh, later on too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll do a study. I'll start saying they, them for everybody. And I'm going to do check marks for who gets pissed about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you'll probably be right initially, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, we'll cool, see, man. I guess. Well, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say it was great talking and uh, yeah, hopefully yeah, it was we'll great talk talking. Soon. Let's do this again uh, when we're able to. Sounds good. All right. Take care, man. See you.